Hey folks, Joseph A. Savora here. Do I need to ask what movie review I, I should review today? Because I'm not going to bother telling you the title. In fact, <laughs> I got nothing else to say. But I will show you this. Yeah. I got this piece of crap as a Christmas gift last night. Boy, they. Oh, boy. I saw this movie a few months ago on account of uh, watching other films, and I just. Uh, I knew this movie was going to be bad from the start. Especially when it was on development. Um, back in 2012 when when Michael Bay was going to announce that he was going to do his version of this movie. And they were going to turn him into aliens. Well, I'm glad that never happened. But <laughs> it could have been worse. But now, once this movie finally got made and got released this year. Yeah, going against a much better film called Guardians of the Galaxy. They wind up looking like this. Yep, they, they all look like Goombas mixed in with the Michelin Man. And they're, they're giant, and they're definitely ugly looking. Yeah. But to be fair, I didn't, now I didn't open the Blu-ray, and I'm definitely not going to because I'm going to return this sucker. Um, I'm glad I got a gift receipt from Best Buy so I can return this and get something better. Yeah, I'm, in fact, I'm probably going to get the, the movie Guardians of the Galaxy and maybe some other much better Blu-rays uh, of other films that I like more than this piece of crap. <laughs> yeah. It's just... It's just, you know... It's, not a, it's, it's just a waste of time. In fact, it even makes the 2007 CGI animated feature TMNT look good. Like like it's a masterpiece compared to this. You know the movie is going to be bad when, when it makes that film look good. And that's why I love the 90s movies even more. Yeah, because at least they look more realistic. I mean, they were animatronics at the time. They were done by the Jim Henson Creature Shop. Although the third movie, though, was done by a different company called Effects Company. That's what it was called. Hell, I love the third movie even more than this piece of crap. Right there. Yeah, I know I'm holding it sideways, but who cares? It's just... Oh! God off. Well, let's get to this shit fest already because I'm going to return this piece of crap and I'm not going to deal with this anymore. It's it's also a shame that they're going to make a sequel to this uh, and I'm not going to waste my money on it. Unless it comes out on as a screener, but <laughs> no way. It stars Megan Fox as April O'Neil. Yep. Yeah, who would have fought? Because uh, she was... You know, I think I liked her much better in, in Transformers than this mess. <laughs> yeah. Will Arnett from Saturday Night Live. But I know he's been in several pictures. William Frickner. Alan Richardson. Nora Fisher. Pete Hosex. And with Johnny Knoxville. Jeremy Howard, Danny Woodburn, Tony Shalob, Tohoru Masamune, Whoopi Goldberg, Mina Noji, Abby Elliott, Tara Killian, K. Todd Friedman, and Paul Fitzgerald. Yep, it's produced by Michael Bay, and it's directed by 
Jonathan Leisman. Yep, the same guy that gave us a lot of crappy movies, including Darkness Falls and Battle Los Angeles. The movie begins set in New York. Channel 6 News reporter April O'Neill, who's played by Megan Fox, is doing some researching on a gang called the Foot Clan that may have been terrorizing the entire city. You know, after she was doing her report on trampling workouts, which it, you may have seen all the photos on the internet, yeah, and, and even better than the movie itself, you know, I'd rather see more of that. She started to talk to the, the dock worker about the chemicals that may have been linked to the Foot Clan, in which later that night, she started to witness them by unloading all the cargo. April decided to bring her cell phone to record the actual footage until suddenly she spotted a shadowy figure and, and was taking all the foot soldiers one by one. So the next day she started to tell all of her co-workers as well as her boss Bernadette Thompson who's played by Whoopi Goldberg about what just happened. Unfortunately, no one would believe in her story. Yeah, they were like treating her like shit though throughout this movie, but you know what? I don't blame them. Because Mega Fox was totally over the top with, with her performance. Well, some performance that turned out to be. Well, during at the subway station, the Foot Clan had made their next attack and holding hostage until suddenly April rushes to the scene and then finally spotted the vigilantes you know, going after the soldiers and and turns out the vigilantes themselves as we speak are the humanoid known as Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles which has the names based on the Italian artists Leonardo, Michelangelo, Donatello, and Raphael. So then after uh, they started saving their lives you know and and going after them. April decided to, to escape and finally spotted them until they started to notice her on, on the top of the building and actually demand to give them the camera. Yeah, including that one scene where <laughs> Yeah, as you saw in the trailers, which is really bad. Yeah, one of the turtles decided to take off their mask. Yeah. He's saying, Oh, it's just a mask. It's a mask. Hold it. See? Then she passes out. Ugh. Anyway, once she finally awakened, she has started to learn about their identity, but then, which apparently the turtles had deleted her photo and asked the sign to catch some of their names, finding them very familiar. So once they started to leave, you know, they were jumping off on buildings and they, of course, are seeing the line. She decided to take another photo of them. They're returning to their lair, which of course is the sewers. The turtles have been caught by a rat named Master Splinter. Yep. So basically what Splinter does is that he started to scold them for going outside to the city. You know, slapping them across their faces and actually taking them to the hash where he just tortures them by, by giving them some pizza in order to... <laughs> to speak out uh, about what they were doing over there outside and the, and the fact that they might have spotted April. But meanwhile, April suddenly rushes home and opens a box full of documents including a video footage that was recorded on July 1999 about the Project Renaissance in which her father, Dr. O'Neill, who is now deceased, she started to spot the, all the turtles that she had, you know, her pet turtles, that she was taking care of from her father's laboratory as it seemed very similar to the Ninja Turtles that she spotted. So recalling the development of the mutagens, uh, a chemical that her father and as well as his uh, lab partner Eric Sachs, who's now a famous scientist and CEO of the Sachs Industries, had worked for, you know, she started to do some research about the, the Ninja Turtles themselves that might have been taken from the laboratory. So she tries to convince Bernadette about this story. Unfortunately, 
causes her to get fired for her job. April decided to tell her cameraman, Bern Fenwick, who's played by Will Arnett, who doesn't believe in her story either, but actually agreed to take her to the home of, of Eric Sachs by showing the photo about the Ninja Turtles and, and explaining about the Project Renaissance that may have been occurred you know, by using all the mutagens for the healing properties. But once the, the laboratory was destroyed, the mutagens somehow uh, created all the turtles and they wound up, you know, becoming mutated and, and, and developed into humanoids. So, <laughs> so it, it also cured that, you know, prior to the laboratory being, being destroyed and everything, you know, April actually saved their lives and actually, uh, and actually let them go until you know what happened. Which, yeah, we're going to get to that because, you know, Raphael was actually telling the story about this. Oh, they had to change everything, don't they? Uh, okay. So once uh, Splinter decided to play a game on the Turtles, they decided to find April and, and blindfolded her so she won't know their actual location that they're at. They took her to Splinter, who starts to explain his story on how she saved their lives before when she rescued them from the fire and released them into the sewer. So since then, the Turtles and Splinter have grew more intelligent from the mutagens over the past 50 years. He started teaching the Turtles how to defend themselves by using the art, the martial arts book of Ninjutsu. They were practicing doing all these martial arts moves and of course, you know, they started eating pizza as well since that's their favorite food. There was even one scene in the film that did start to reminisce the 1990 original film. And yeah, you know that scene where, you know, they, they ordered the pizza from Domino's Pizza and then and they started to <laughs> cut out all the slices and then suddenly yeah all, all the pizzas are on their plates and and the pizza actually went on top of <laughs> a splinter they did that here in the film and you wouldn't believe it <laughs> but they did anyway April actually admitted that she told her father about they actually worked with, with Eric only to aware that he might be a, the adopted son of the Foot Clan leader named Shredder. Meanwhile, Eric decided to talk about all the information involving the turtles to Shredder. And it causes to spread a deadly virus to the entire city, causing a quarantine to order to seize control and also offering the mutagens as their cure. So Shredder of course needed to take the turtles to extract the mutagens from their blood. But after the virus had spread, Sax decided to plan to sell the mutagen's cure for the massive profit and even become more richer than ever before. So with that aside, a battle occurred once the Foot Clan, along with Shredder, you know, found Splinter and the Turtles inside, and they were, you know, and they finally captured all three of the Turtles, Leonardo, Donatello and Mike, Michelangelo, while Splinter is um, is severely injured, and while Raphael actually survived the wreckage of the lair, which you know they thought he was dead at first. Yeah. So then Splinter had to instruct Raphael in April, you know, with the help of, of her cameraman Burn, to go after them. So they drove all the way to the snowy mountains, and once they arrived. April had freed the turtles, joined in with Raphael and, and fighting you know, Shredder al along with the, the Foot Clan. But of course Shredder escapes and, and, and the rest of the game winds up going after them, escaping down to the snowy mountains. Yep, and oh this movie was getting longer and longer as, they, as we saw that scene. And, yeah, there was even one scene where even a skier actually jumped by and him tell him. <laughs> I don't know. But later on, almost towards the end of the film, the Turtles actually had planned to attack Shredder on, on the rooftops of Sack's building before he'd be able to release the toxin. While April and Burn had searched the mutagens and actually battled Sax inside the building, only to reveal to April that he actually killed her father for destroying the laboratory. As he closes on April, you know, Sax was already being knocked out 
by Byrne using the microscope. April finds the mutagen and heads on top of the rooftop to give it to the turtles. But with their help, they finally defeat Shredder and they fell all the way down from the building until they finally <laughs> they're finally safe. So of course that night you know Byrne decided to attempt to impress April by using a Fort Crown Victoria police inceptor. But suddenly it was already being crashed in by the turtles vehicle of their own and accidentally blow it up by using an RPG. So yeah, they offered April a ride home, but she finally turns down the offer. So yeah. <laughs> and then the movie ends, you know, starting with that song, Happy Together. <sighs> oh boy, you know, this movie got me a headache already. And it really, it really did. Uh, there's no lie for this. It really sucks real bad. And I've seen plenty of bad movies this year so far, and this is no exception. And not only is Megan Fox really over the top in her role as April O'Neil, but it's also the fact that she looks nothing like April O'Neil. Yeah, she had to wear the yellow coat that's similar to the cartoon. Or, yeah, in the comics as well, but <laughs> she was way over the top. I, I think I liked her better in Transformers, you know, as uh, Sam Witchwicky's girlfriend. Yeah, she, at least she's more entertaining than her stupid role in this movie. Yeah. It's ridiculous. They should have cast a better actress to play the role as April O'Neil. Why couldn't they cast, and out of all movies out there, why couldn't they just cast someone better? I would have had, if if I had to make a, a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles movie, I would have rather had casted Scarlett Johansson as April O'Neil. Yeah, because She'll definitely fit the bill. Not to mention, uh, yeah, they could have done so much better with her character. Um, because it, it, it even sucks that, you know, she doesn't even have red hair. Only some highlights. Uh, it, it's just natural brunette. That's all it is. And it was really awful. I mean, she, she just keeps going around, you know, doing her stupid thing. And, and I, I just don't believe in it. Boy, you know, Whoopi Goldberg, you know, came a long way for all the films she's been doing. And she's now doing the TV series, The View. Well, now we don't have to worry about her being uh, the worst film that she's ever been in, like like Theodore Rex, because I think this pretty much plays it out. Because this is even worse than Theodore Rex. Yeah, what a waste. She, she must have been cashed in for a paycheck. But she does give it a thankless role as her boss. So. <laughs> what else is new? Uh, William Frickner, I have liked some of the films that he's capable of, of doing. Although I really hated Armageddon, yeah, that Michael Bay film. He was okay in Ultraviolet, but that's okay. And, oh boy. Uh, when I saw the trailer for this movie, um, I was expecting all this time that he was going to become, as we speak, the Shredder. I'm glad that never happened. I hate to do a dead giveaway on this one, but I'm so happy at least he didn't play Shredder. Because it didn't make any sense at all. So they did use a Japanese actor to play him. So, yes, they did got one thing right. The rest of the movie isn't. It's just ridiculous. They had to change the storyline. You know, thinking that... All the Ninja Turtles were taken care of from, from April, you know, you know, since she was a little girl. I mean, what the hell? I mean, at least the original film, it, it made sense to see what was going on. We know that Shredder was a killer. He actually killed the, the family which, uh, which Splinter was involved with. This time they had to change the storyline, and it makes no fucking sense. The battle scenes in the film were completely overdone. I could not believe it. They were loud, irritating, way over the top, and and it was just too much. Um, the turtles themselves, 
I don't know what else to say other than the fact that they started making all these stupid jokes. Yeah, mostly uh, a lot of you know flirting and sexual jokes and all that, and all this other garbage. That oh man, I, I'm thinking to myself, are these are the turtles that I've seen before um, compared to the ones I've seen later on? Because this is just ridiculous. Oh. They do look really ugly and and unsatisfying to, to see. Um, come on, man. Uh, Shredder, on the other hand, well, I think I'll take the Super Shredder from 1991 movie better. This one just looks like crap. I'm sorry. Um, however, the Japanese actor who played Shredder did a good job, at least. But that's not saying much. Um, I was a bit surprised that Danny Woodburn decided to do uh, decided to play Splinter, even though it was voiced by Tony Shalhoub. Because, yeah, I mean, even though the movie was uh, done by CGI, yeah, he was probably doing motion capture for doing you know, Splinter. So that's really interesting how he was doing all these moves and everything. I would have loved to see that in action too, if I had to look at the behind the scenes. Yeah. Because, by the way, I, I met the actor, so he's, yeah, he's fun. It's just too bad the film sucks so bad. I, I'm sorry. It was really bad. I, I didn't care for anybody in the movie. Um, not even War or Nets, who, you know, who would have been good as, as his cameraman. And, um, it's, it's just not worth it. Um, but if, but, <laughs> I'm telling you this, though. Like I said before, it did make TMNT look like a masterpiece. I mean, as boring and stupid as the 2007 film was, at least they did manage to make it look more like the Ninja Turtles than this stupid film was offering. Because at least they were coming up with something different than, than, it, <laughs> than it really should. I don't know. But I'm just glad that at least they didn't become aliens. Because <laughs> that would be even worse. Um, so all I can say though is that if you're a Turtles fan, avoid this film at all costs. It, it's not worth it. In fact, I'd rather watch Transformers over this any day. And I happen to love Transformers. I don't care. I mean, even the fourth movie is better than this. It's not, I mean, granted the fourth movie isn't as good as all the Transformers movies I've seen. But I swear to God, I'd rather see that than, than anything this movie had to offer. And Jonathan Libus, man, I swear to God, why why is this guy getting more work these days? You know, he directed some really bad films. This makes it up for it. And the sad part is, since it became the highest grossing film prior to Guardians of the Galaxy coming out, even though Guardians of the Galaxy came first before this piece of shit did, it just makes you wonder, you know, why... Guardians of the Galaxy is a much better movie. Yeah, because at least their jokes and all the humor that they put in that film were very well written and very well made, while this one is a piece of fucking shit. Their dialogue is crappy. There's nothing to like about it. They pretty much ruined everything that they were hoping for. And... It's like, they're destroying my childhood days. That, that's what they're trying to do. It, it felt like it, too. I, I know I say this, but... Doesn't it feel like... <laughs> that they're just trolling you to, to see movies like this? Because that's how I felt. Yeah. Well, all I can say, though, is that... It's just sad that they're going to make a sequel to this movie, and... They're probably going to get some new villains this time. I think they're finally going to get the villains that's from the series, you know, as well as the comics. You know, the comics were really awesome. I love the 2003 cartoon as well as the 1987 cartoon. And, you know, and, and to be fair, I didn't think that the 2012 series um, that's on Nickelodeon wasn't that bad at all. I mean, despite the fact that it's, it's in CGI form, at least they managed to get uh, Rob Polson to do some voice acting again as one of the turtles, so that's cool. Yeah, and they got Sean Astin and Jason Biggs on the series. 
So you can't go wrong with that. I'd rather watch that than, than this crap that I'm seeing today. That's for sure. I'd rather watch the, the Nickelodeon series now. Because I didn't think it wasn't that bad at all. I mean, I thought it was going to be bad, but now that I realize it's, it's not as bad. It's just not as good as the 2003 series, as well as all the other ones. But that's okay. Even Turtles Forever was an awesome movie. And I loved that movie, too. That was the best turtle film I've ever saw. And that was back in 2009. Because they had a crossover between all the other turtles. Everything from the comics to the 1987 series. It works. It really did. It, it brought it to life. Why can't this movie bring it to life? Exactly. So, like I said, avoid this garbage. It's one of the worst movies of the year. And I've seen plenty of bad films already. So, <laughs> there you go. That's Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles from 2014. And it sucks. And I give it zero stars. I'm Joseph A. Sabora. And I'll see you later. Much later. Bye!